Welcome Trinidad and Tobago to our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Joseph Lopez. Let's take a look at the headlines. President announces new appointments to the Integrity Commission. MOU between Trinidad and Tobago and Canada on prison systems. And the Ministry of Public Administration pilots Diamond Standard. In our top story, His Excellency Anthony Camona, President of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, has appointed four persons to serve as members of the Integrity Commission. In a press release issued today, President Camona reveals the new members are retired Justice Sebastian Ventor, Mr. Deirdre Jagannath and Dr. Shelly Ann Lalchan, while Mr. Sirinarine Joku is a returning member. Retired Justice Ventor is currently a lecturer at the Hugh Wooding Law School and has been a lawyer for almost 35 years. He was also Supreme Court judge prior to his retirement from the bench. Dr. Dirinarayan Jagannath is a petroleum and environmental engineer and is about to retire from the petroleum company of Trinidad and Tobago Limited, Petrotrin, after 33 years of service. Dr. Shelly Ann Lal Chan is a leading ophthalmologist and surgeon. Having spent the majority of her medical career practicing in the United Kingdom, Dr. Lal Chan has returned home and is now quietly engaged in social work in a professional area and expertise. Mr. Sirinarayan Joku is the only returning member of the Integrity Commission. He previously was appointed to serve a three-year term on March 15, 2010. Mr. Joku served in the nation for 35 years as a member of the public service, his last posting being that of Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Trade and Industry. The press release from the Office of the President states the oath of office will be administered to the new members of the Commission very soon. And in other news, steps are being taken to bring local prison system into the 21st century and ensure that best practices are observed. These are some of the results which are to come out of a memorandum of understanding between Canada and Trinidad and Tobago. The government is taking steps toward the modernizing of the penal system to bring it in line with international human rights conventions and best practices. In May 2012, the Correctional Service of Canada and the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Services signed a Memorandum of Understanding which sets out the framework that provides for the cooperation, information sharing and technology transfer between correctional prison services of both nations. It is no secret that conditions at some of our nation's prisons could be improved. Increasing prison population coupled with outmoded prison rules has given rise to less than adequate conditions of confinement. Alliances such as this allow us to modernize the system in the shortest possible time frame since our technocrats will be allowed to develop new competencies and expertise relatively quickly. The Honourable Minister listed a number of benefits to be derived from the partnership. Correction Services of Canada will work with us to improve our policies, our technologies, security intelligence, correctional programs, facility planning, data gathering, research and, con research and evaluation as well as to provide training and leadership development for prison officers. The Honourable Minister is confident that some of the target goals will be met by the deadlines which have been agreed upon. Discussions were held earlier this year on several topics relative to the vision of Trinidad and Tobago's penal system and the issues that currently plague it. Meanwhile, Commissioner of Prisons Martin Martinez said Monday's discussions were fruitful and covered, among other topics, the need for a proper offender management system, Canada's restorative justice model, and the cell phone challenge which Trinidad and Tobago's prison system faces. The Commission of Correctional Services Canada said there is much to learn from Trinidad and Tobago and noted that the challenges observed in the prison system are not unique to this country. I have the opportunity to engage uh, uh, colleagues uh, around the world. Uh, so the challenges that uh, Trinidad and Tobago are facing are very similar to ones we are facing as well as uh, uh, numerous other uh, countries. So one of the things that's extremely important uh, for us, and I know extremely important for the Minister, the Commissioner, and the Permanent Secretary, is how to work in, in partnership to, uh, to share experiences. I think as the Minister uh, uh, pointed out, uh, uh, no need to uh, reinvent the wheel. Um, uh, here's an opportunity for, uh, for learning from each other. The Justice 
Justice Minister says both correctional and prison services have been working together in the last few months and by October, headway would have been made in the modernizing of the local prison system. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. There will be a shift in customer experience in Trinidad and Tobago as the Ministry of Public Administration pilots the Trinidad and Tobago Diamond Standard. One day after the United Nations celebrated Public Service Day and launched Public Service Week, the Trinidad and Tobago Diamond Standard was launched at the Hyatt Regency. This milestone achievement will see an enhanced customer service for locals, foreigners and most importantly, public officers. There was a large turnout of government agencies and stakeholders from the public service sector at the Hyatt Regency Trinidad on Monday, where they began discussions on the Trinidad and Tobago Diamond Standard. Gold to Diamond represents the journey towards the renewal and modernization of the Trinidad and Tobago public service. This journey represents a 10-year vision which began in 2012 at the National Public Service's 50th Golden Anniversary and culminates in 2022 on the occasion of the 60th Diamond Anniversary. It is an integrated approach focusing on excellence in service delivery and human resource management modernization. This diamond standard is ours and is customized and tailored for success in our beloved country Trinidad and Tobago. For the next 10 years, the Diamond Standard will be our flagship for taking the public service of Trinidad and Tobago to the peak of customer service, professional performance, ease of doing business, and global competitiveness. It will not be only a platform, but will also be a launching pad that will propel us forward into the future where the citizen is the center of the public service universe. The Honourable Minister noted that under the new standard, the organisational structure will allow for greater ease of doing business with the government and facilitating greater accountability, new professional job opportunities, increased flexibility, value for money and a supportive environment for entrepreneurship. During the next six months, a number of agencies will be a part of the pilot programme, which will then become the established standard in Trinidad and Tobago from 2014. Mrs. Jeannie Turton, who is a consultant in this process, was a part of the United Kingdom's public service reform program. She says despite many of the foreseeable issues that can potentially arise, the program must be as ambitious as possible. The, the critical thing about this approach is for the first time we're being very clear to the citizens, the citizens of Trin Trinidad and Tobago, exactly what kind of service they can expect from us. We're also telling them what we expect from them. So it's no use our saying that we'll always start our meetings on time if they're late. There's no point in saying um, we'll, uh, we'll deliver you a passport within X months if you don't fill in the form correctly. So it's also sort of a contract between citizens and the public too. One of the key partners in this process is the judiciary, which believes this standard is important to the continued functioning of the arm of the state. Well, um, it really is in keeping with what the judiciary basically sees itself as developing into over the next several years. It is also in keeping with the current initiatives that we have already begun. The whole issue of citizen-centered service the issue of customer care and customer service is already a, a work in progress as far as our organization is concerned. So this is both, I think, a validation of the work that we have already begun. And it is good to know that as far as the executive is concerned and our relationship with the executive, that there is this support for the initiatives that our organization has already started. Citizens will see a gradual change in the way they are treated as customers in this country as the Trinidad and Tobago Diamond Standard becomes a reality. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. After the break, TNT's new CSI team. Stay with us. Welcome back. The government is seeking to purchase four new interceptor vessels at a cost of 21 million from local manufacturers to patrol the waters around Tobago, in an effect to stem the flow of drugs and illegal activities there. This was disclosed following a meeting between Prime Minister the Honourable Kamala Prasad Bissessa and Tobago House of Assembly Chief Secretary of the London. Some 12 Coast Guard interceptor vessels 
which are currently in a state of disrepair, are to be refurbished to be used in the fight against crime around the country's coastal waters, including Tobago. That's according to Prime Minister Kamala Pasad Bissessa. During the meeting, Chief Secretary London expressed concerns in the areas of national security and fight against crime. Mr. London expressed concerns about manning of coastal waters, inlets and bays in Tobago, and the surveillance and protection of the waters surrounding Tobago. But the Prime Minister says that CCTV cameras on the land have been restored across Tobago. In this regard, I indicated to Chief Secretary that uh, at the moment, the CCTV, on the land, CCTV cameras uh, have been installed across Tobago. The radar is, um, I'm advised, is fully operational, um, which will assist both on land and off the coast. Mrs. Passard Bissessa also advised that Cabinet has approved for refurbishment works to be undertaken on 12 interceptors and are also in discussions with regard to other vessels. Which will be to man the waters around Trinidad as well as Tobago. In addition, there is active consideration now for the purchase of four new interceptors um, from uh, local manufacturers that is actually being considered as we speak by the uh, National Security Council. Also high on the agenda is the issue of internal self-governance for Tobago. But both leaders, although committed to realizing this, emerged from the meeting still unsure of how to achieve this process. Mrs. Passad Bissessa said her government will consider a proposal by the Chief Secretary as to a possible way forward. We have both committed, uh, my government and the DHA and Chief, Honourable Chief Secretary, committed to uh, internal self-governance for Tobago. But the issue still remains, what is the process that we should employ? The Chief Secretary has brought a, 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 a document which we have agreed that we will consider. The two met for the second time this year since the January 21st THA elections as part of their commitment to holding quarterly non-crisis meeting to discuss a number of issues affecting Tobago. Both described the one-hour-long meeting as positive, cordial and encouraging. Detecting and solving crimes is the aim of the new crime scene investigating department. New members were added to the force as training was provided over a period of three months to 18 persons. Speaking to graduates, Minister of National Security Emmanuel George says the program seeks to improve the investigation of criminal acts across the country. No, it's not a scene from the popular hit TV series CSI Miami, but in fact the men and women serving Trinidad and Tobago's latest crime scene investigating department. The National Security Training Academy introduced the CSI program to over 18 students with the aim of teaching them forensic techniques often seen employed in the hit drama series, but this time to help solve criminal cases here in Trinidad and Tobago. Training was held over a three-month basis and upholds international standards as the program is UK-based accredited. National Security Minister Emmanuel George says the program will seek to boost the crime-fighting arms of the police service. We have a crime detection rate that is pretty low. We want to get it up. Your contribution in that effort is vital as crime scene investigators. Participants are trained in digital crime scene photography, which enables camera stills to be taken as part of evidence to be presented in court. But while the job appears glamorous on your television screen, Deputy Police Commissioner Mervyn Richardson told the graduates the intensity of the program requires skills entwined with focus and dedication. Some of us have been watching CSI, forget the name, on, on the TV. That is for TV mature audience. The real McCoy will start next week where the rubber hits the road. When you have to go into Kumana Forest, six miles, and bring back out a sample, a blood sample, a tissue sample, you have to be smart to look on the wall, to apply luminol. I am trained too, so I could talk about this for the rest of the day and bore you to hell. But I won't do that. I am asking you then that you must continue to live the dream. Currently, the Administration of Justice Act 2012 facilitates the role of the crime scene investigator. 
According to the DCP, teams will be provided with the necessary advanced forensic scientist testing and technology available. We're trying to make the CSI unit a unit with about, a, about 120 persons who will be skilled not only in retrieving bodies and things like that, but in harvesting DNA from crime scenes and from doing extra work. We have some beautiful um, instruments to my right. And so we will continue to build the capacity. In this way, we will be able to affect in a very meaningful way, the crime situation in Trinidad and Tobago. It's expected that utilizing these skills and training will improve the crime detection rate and aid in conducting investigations. Kimberam Kalawan, News 4. When we come back, national records fall in track and field in our sport report. Stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. Sprinter Kelly Ann Batiste was the star of the show when the National Open Track and Field Championship was contested on the weekend at the Hazley Crawford Stadium in Port of Spain. The Olympian looked impressive ahead of the World Championships with national records in both the 100 and 200 meter finals. Here's Wayne Cunningham with more from the championships. On Saturday, Kelly Ann Batiste retained her national 100 meter title with a blistering 10.83 seconds to establish a new national record and the fastest time in the world this year. On Sunday, it was time for the 200 meters, with Fitia de Class Field with Batiste of Zenit up against the likes of Kai Selvon of Airborne Sonics and Zenit's Simoy Hackett, who took the national record last year with a time of 22.55. But as the runners took the bend, it was all Batiste, and she shaved some 1900 of a second off the record to take the event in a time of 22.36 seconds with Hackett taking the silver in 22.98 and Selvon the bronze in 23.05. Earlier, there was a sweep of the podium places for neon trackers in the women's 400 meters hurdles, with Sparkle McKnight hitting the tape first, followed by Ramona Modest and Kanisha Spann. And uh, Kanisha Spann, uh, that's how they'll finish. Sparkle McKnight takes it. Ramona Modest in second. Despite some problems at the end of his race, Olympian Jay Hugh Gordon, running in the Memphis Colors, dominated the men's version of the event, coming home in a time of 49.25 to take the goal. Silver went to Emmanuel Mayers of Rebirth and Memphis's Ruben Walters in third. In the men's 800 meters, it was Jamal James of Rebirth coming in ahead of Mark London of Zenit and George Smith of the Defence Force. It was also a big day for Olympic 400m bronze medalist Lalon Gordon, as he established a personal best in the 200m. The Tigers athlete winning the event in a time of 20.26. Taking the silver was Sky Giroux of Abilene, with his teammate Jareem Richards grabbing the bronze. But the weekend belonged to Kellyanne Batiste, as she did the double in the sprints, to be well placed ahead of the World Championships, which will be held in Moscow, Russia, in August. We in Cunningham, News 4 Sports. More news after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission is in a much better position now to prevent major blackouts. This was one of the revelations made at the Joint Select Committee meeting on Friday. There have been several developments under the Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission since the nationwide blackout on March 29th. This was revealed by TNTX General Manager during the Joint Select Committee inquiry into the administration and operations of the Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission with particular focus on power generation and supply. 
Mr. Ramsuk noted that the outage was as a result of a drop in the gas pressure to the isolated feeds bus and caused a loss of the total generating system which feeds PowerGen and Trinity and the Trinidad Generator Unlimited plant. What we have done so far is that we have met with all those agencies. I have also had direct contact with all those agencies. So let's start off with, the, with, with, with Phoenix Gas. Phoenix Gas has written me, they have indicated that they have sorted out the issue, there was a failure of a component in the control system, they have monitored, they have replaced the item, they have monitored the item, they have confirmed that the item is working properly, there are no issues there. In parallel to that, the National Gas Company has created what they call an alternate feed. The Phoenix Park development is in progress right now, however, what they have done is that the bypass arrangement was not manned. The bypass arrangement was 24 hour manned. So that, that aspect of it basically has been dealt with to some extent. The general manager gave the assurance that systems have been put in place to prevent another major blackout and to ensure a more efficient service. One of the issues that we are looking at is the issue of getting alternate fuel. And that is being looked at right now at the penal power station, right? Um, so some um, form of alternate fuel is being looked at to have sufficient alternate fuel in the event that you lose your gas supply, right, so that you could run the penal power station. Um, they are what they call black start units, six and seven is properly working at penal to bring on the supply. Because when you lose total supply, you must have those units operating to bring, on, to bring your auxiliaries, to bring on power to your power stations to start your auxiliaries, to bring on your auxiliaries. Um, I also confirmed that in the Point Lisa's um, um, unit number three, functioning properly, no issues at all. And for the first time in Port of Spain, which is mainly a steam arrangement, they have, they, have, they have brought back what they call GT6, right, in service. And that's what they call a black start unit that could provide supply quickly to, the, to Port of Spain, to the generating plant at Port of Spain. Mr. Ramsuk says the commission continues to have regular meetings with the various independent power producers linked to it to impress upon them the issue of alternate fuel. He says by the first quarter of 2014, TNTech will be able to receive the full capacity out of TGU. On April 8th of this year, we commissioned what you call the gateway substation. For the first time, we were able to bring power 132,000 volts into the city of Port of Spain. Um, gateway at this point in time, when fully functional, will give you 260 megawatts. What that means is that you could have a total loss of supply at the B power station in Port of Spain and be able to bring capacity from any other power plants into Port of Spain, which is important for us. Meanwhile, he says the Commission is paying greater attention to supplying Tobago with the necessary power it requires to meet the needs of the sister isle. TNTech has 437,000 customers, which equates to 97% of households in this country. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. And that story brings us to the end of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Joseph Lopez. Thank you for watching.